Okay, that's enough. I want my freckles to show, okay? Can you fire him? I'm not ready to start yet. Harry, what are you doing? I don't want you doing that, Harry. Pick up Archie. And no, I want you to pick him up. I'll call you later. Okay, okay, bye. I'm ready now. Hi, welcome to my new podcast, Archetype. We're going to address all of the stereotypes and what it's like to be oppressed. So hopefully convert all of my listeners to wokeism. Don't forget, this podcast is being sponsored by The Who. Today's guest is Serena Williams. However, we're not really going to give her much airtime. I want to clear up this notion. I don't think there's anything diva-like about myself. I was raised very oppressed because I'm black. Okay, yes, I lived in a nice suburban home and I went to expensive private schools. But I was only a Z-list actress. A royal family. Audacity. To think that I married into this family to work. Harry and I have always just wanted a very private life together. This is why, of course, starting my own podcast. Oh, excuse me. What, Harry? Oh, you're not allowed to do that right now. I'm doing my podcast right now, Harry. Uh, where's Archie? Where's the baby? Well, call somebody and get somebody to help you. I can't. I'm working. And to think there was a time that my husband actually thought that I was going to be like my sister-in-law, Kate. As I was like, what? Serena's leaving? I'm going to put her on the podcast. Just give me a minute. I'm not done with my intro. You know what? Better yet. Let's take a break. I'm tired. I've been working for two hours today. Okay. Don't bother leaving any comments because I'm really not interested in what you have to say. Okay. Bye, everybody. Which is she talks about if they'd stayed in Britain, their children would face every day on the school run sort of 40 photographers mm. pestering them. Well, this is just not the case at all. So I, I wondered, I, you know, I wondered if that was Harry's experience. E no, e even in the case of Harry and William, yeah. um, they'd have a photo call on their first day at school yeah. with, you know, a couple of photographers. We don't touch them because yeah, of an agreement that we let the children live their lives. It's no secret that Meghan often dominated Harry and he didn't seem to mind it. But now, he's starting to show his character. Look how his face is changing here. They're posing for a camera and smiling. But only until Meghan takes Harry's hand. They keep looking at each other while the camera is on. But as soon as it is turned off, this happens. Harry looks away from his wife and pulls away his hand. It seems that his mood instantly changes. But Meghan does not give up. A second later, she grabs his hand in her classic double claw. And look at Harry's reaction now. He lowers his head and adjusts his jacket, then leans forward in his chair as if he wants to leave. He looks sternly in front of him and rubs his fingers together nervously. But there is an even more expressive movement. Harry pushes his tongue against the inside of his cheek. Does this look like a sign of happiness and relaxation? Psychologists say this is a nervous reaction. It can signal hiding something or getting away with something. Or maybe getting away from someone? So, Megan of Montes... I mean, sorry, Montecito. She's left the firm behind. I don't think so. I mean... Can you really leave the firm behind if you keep bringing them up every single chance you can get? They've moved on. Megan's the one who was unable to because, like I said, they're her claim to fame. From the very first paragraph, there is a very colorful description of her kid. Now, again, I thought that the whole point was to shield their children from the press, from the media, from the uh, goldfish bowl. Next, we immediately move on to criticizing the royal family, for how rigid they are and how Megan was unable to craft her own image in social media like she was used to when she was a two-bit actress. Not that we ever doubted it or needed any confirmation, but this article really emphasizes how much of a control freak she is. And this is where the first inflammatory lie, an absolute lie, emanates. Good morning to you. Well, I think at the moment it's still kind of hard to say which way things are swaying here in the States. Certainly, if you look at social media, there are two very clear camps. There are the people that absolutely love Harry and Meghan and the people that just are diehard royalists all the way. If you look at some of the press coverage in the UK, it certainly suggests that Sussex's popularity in the US is waning. But America is a very large country. And unlike the UK, they don't conduct regular polls about the popularity of various members of the family. But I think it is fair to say that coverage has changed in terms of its tone. You just showed there a cover of the New York Post, which 
included a pretty scathing editorial about the Duchess of Sussex's recent interview with the Carter, an American publication. The Washington Post, which is notoriously left-leaning, recently accused Harry and Meghan of being trapped in a trauma plot. Even Don Lemon, who's been very supportive of Meghan uh, in his coverage at CNN, he's a CNN anchor, he said he applauded her tackling colorism in her recent interview with Mariah Carey for her podcast, but he was shocked, he expressed his shock over the fact that she is the age she is and only just beginning to understand what it is to be a black woman in America. So mm. it seems that people here are starting to question some of the Sussex's claims and their approach to, to the work they're doing. Australian TV host Natalie Barr called Meghan Markle a tosser since the Duchess compared herself to Nelson Mandela. Meghan said that the South Africans danced in the street when she married Prince Harry, just like they did when Mandela was freed from prison. I think in Australia we'd say she's just full of it. She's a tosser. She's a total tosser, said the host. The reason those relationships are so painful is because narcissists are most concerned with their own personal needs. And they prioritize that so intensely that it comes at the utter devastation of the other person. And yet those relationships can be the hardest to leave. Because when things are good, they're so, so good. But when they're bad, they're awful. But the memory of the good times and the possibility of the return to the good times keeps us absolutely glued to the relationship. Wow, this has been so much fun to watch. I just can't even believe that this narcissist is still going. But here we are, just like Amber Heard, right? Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more of my stuff, check out my Patreon, patreon.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. You guys, I will talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.